Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our talk on Open Policy Agent. My name is Amit Nambiar, uh, and I'm a platform architect at Pivotal. I have my colleague here, Mark. Hi, I'm uh, Mark Puddock, and I'm also a platform architect at Pivotal. Thank you. Today, we are going to talk about uh, Open Policy Agent. It's a general purpose policy engine. Before I get into this session, I'd like to know how many of you have used Open Policy Agent before. Can you please raise your hands if you used Open Policy Agent? Just one person there. Good. This is a very basic introduction to OPA, and I'm sure everyone here will benefit uh, from this talk, as well as people who are experienced. I'm sure you'll learn a thing or two from this talk. Great. So uh, Mark and I are platform architects, and we have this opportunity to work with our customers and prospects who are trying to adopt Kubernetes, right? And when we talk to our customers, uh, the one question which comes up a lot is, how do we implement custom policies with Kubernetes? And open policy agent is solving that problem in that space. Right. And this session is about how does OPA work with Kubernetes to solve uh, having policies, I mean implementing policies. Right. The agenda for today is Mark is going to talk about what is a policy, what is the architecture of OPA, and how does OPA work with Kubernetes. As I said before, OPA is a general purpose policy engine, so we are going to talk, focus on how does OPA work with Kubernetes. Over to you, Mark. Okay, so as Amit just said, I'm going to talk a little bit about what OPA is, uh, or OPA as it's generally called, um, and where you would use it, and, and then we're going to talk a little bit about the architecture around it and, and how it all hangs together. So OPA, it's a um, unified policy tool set. So you're probably thinking, well, what does that mean? Um, and it's generally it's a general purpose toolkit as well, written in, in Go. Um, so there's a couple of things around that. So I'll start firstly with the general purpose. It is actually, um, you can run it as a library outside of Kubernetes if you wanted to. This talk is actually going to talk about it within Kubernetes. So that's how we're going to go through. So as I say, OPA, it's a policy tool set. So if you think about Kubernetes and how it works as a declarative system, so we have effectively resources that are declared um, and then we have controllers that keep, those, keep the state of the system as has been declared in those resources. Um, so when you go into Kubernetes, you use kubectl or whatever to update your, update your resources. So you might deploy a deployment and run some pods up, that kind of stuff. What OPA is trying to do is put a little bit of governance, I guess, around that so that when you go to do these things, um, you, can, uh, you can take check before the resources are updated that what you're updating follows some rules and guidelines that we'll talk about throughout this talk. So policies, they can control multiple things. It can be things like where things are pulled from in registries, basically anything that's in uh, your resource uh, definition. So for instance, in your deployment YAML, that kind of stuff. Um, so you can look at, say, network. You can have thing, things like blackout periods. Um, you can look at container capabilities. Uh, the policies themselves are defined in what's called Rego. Uh, so Amit's going to talk about Rego, and he's going to go through some examples with you uh, a little bit later in the talk. Um, and they're stored generally in, in config maps, um, and there's some CRDs or custom resource definitions um, in V3. So we're going to talk a little bit about the difference between V1, V2, V3, but not a huge amount. And then um, I think basically what Amit's going to cover in his demo is mainly around V1, really, and V2. So to get some kind of concrete examples of the sort of things you might have policies around, um, you'd have things like uh, a couple, couple of ones I've put in here. Uh, there's things like, uh, as you know, we've got a holiday period coming up at the moment. So you might have a blackout uh, for things like um, production updates and that kind of stuff. So you might have a policies around that. You might also uh, have, say, a, a team that's got uh, only allowed to use uh, You've got some GPU nodes in your clusters, and you want to restrict those to just use your um, 
ju just your data science team to actually use those. So that might be another thing you could have as a policy. So these are the kind of things. And then I think the third one I've got here is um, you might have uh, internet-facing services. You want to restrict it so you say that there's only HTTPS for those services. So these are the things that you might want to do. As I said before, it's a declarative. Uh, Kubernetes itself is declarative. And we use what's called admi um, admission controllers uh, as part of OPA. Um, and from the documentation here, I'll read it out for you. It's uh, an admission controller is a piece of code that intercepts requests to Kubernetes API server prior to persistence the object, but after the authentication and, uh, uh, and the authorization. So that, what that means is when you do something like kubectl, uh, it's going to make an API call. At that point, it's going to do the authorization, and it's going to do the authentication. Um, and then it's going to use uh, some webhooks to do um, to call effectively admission controllers. Um, so the first one it's going to look at is a mutating, mutating controller, uh, sorry, a, mutate, a mutating um, webhook. And that's going to allow it to change the, um, uh, change the resource. So for instance, if you have got some labels on, uh, say, a deployment that you need to have on there, that'll allow you to put those on there automatically or default ones. And then the second one, which is probably more important for this talk, is the validation one. So the validation one will allow you to um, validate a piece of um, a, a resource effectively. And, and, and as I say, Emmett's part will talk about this in a little bit more detail. So it'll allow you to validate that. And then you'll be able to see, um, uh, th then it can say yes or no and effectively. And then that will not persist that resource uh, if, for instance, it says that there's something wrong with it. And you'll get an error message. And as I say, uh, Amit will show you this a little bit later. So I'm going to go through the kind of three different um, versions of OPA quickly. And then I'll talk a little bit about how you get installed. So this is the first uh, V1 version. And this is really what we're probably going to cover off mainly today. So I think most people using OPA at the moment use V1 effectively. And I think it's probably a bit of V2. So you can see from the top here, we've got um, kubectl or maybe some controllers that are using an API or pipelines. They're going to make requests, as you'd, you'd imagine, to the API server. What's going to happen is those webhooks that we talked about in the admission controllers are going to go to the OPA server. That's going to then validate that that's correct and, and that's something you're allowed to do. So for instance, if it's outside a blackout period, it will ret it'll return yes. And if it's inside the blackout period, it might return no. And it's going to return that back to the um, API server. You'll see down the bottom here, we've got the kube management piece as well. Um, and what that does is that takes the policy data, which is the rego, which Amit will discuss further as we go through. And it will, it will um, basically watch that for changes. And it will cache that. So it doesn't do a call out when it's doing um, the policy validation. It's got it cached in memory so that it can then present it back to the, so that there's minimal amount of network traffic between uh, OPA and the API server. So that's how V1 kind of works. I think V2, they've moved a couple of things. The Kubernetes policy controller is there now. So it follows more of a, of a guess, a pure Kubernetes type model with having that controller there. Uh, slight differences there as well as it will also do uh, auditing on that as well. But Largely, it works similar to as it did before. And I think the final version that I'm going to talk about very quickly, and we're not really going to cover this off too much today because it's still an alpha. But this is uh, Gatekeeper, which is version 3. Um, and that works. There's a couple of key changes on that. Um, firstly, on the left side, you'll see that the OPA stuff is kind of built into uh, effectively one, one thing. But more importantly, I think, is the fact that what they've done in, in um, V3 is that they've taken the rego, and they've made that effectively a template. And then it allows you to use a custom resource to then fulfill that template. So that allows you to do things like have um, uh, you know, a label check in one, which you can reuse that rego without having to redeploy the same rego with you know, custom pieces of data for what you're trying to do. And you can actually break that out into um, you know, some YAML, a resource YAML. So we're not really going to talk too much about that today, but that's the way it's going in the future. That's quite early. I think it's still an alpha at the moment. Um, so most people are still using sort of the older version. So for a, to install, if you want to get started and 
You can install, it's pretty easy to install actually and get up and running. You just have your Kubernetes cluster. You'll need to have a namespace effectively for the OPA part. Uh, you'll need to create a certificate for all the internal SSL. And I think when I did it, I just used a self signed certificate and that was fine. Then you'll need to employ the, deploy the um, admission controllers, which is what, again, the webhooks will come into. Sidecar webhooks, which again is the effect of the OPA server and the Kube management. And then you can basically add your policies at that point. It's pretty simple to do. It's very well documented. You can go to the website. And there's, a, I think, one of the tutorials that goes through straight from getting it installed and getting up and running, getting some policies running. So I'll hand back now to Amit. And Amit will uh, talk a little bit more about uh, Rego. And he'll give you some demos and examples on how that works. Thanks, Mark. Uh, that was a great introduction to how uh, OPA has evolved and the, uh, the evolving architecture of OPA for a period of time. So as we all know, OPA is a policy engine, and it requires a policy language like Rego to actually implement those policies. So I will walk, walk you through how a policy can be written using Rego. The example I'm going to use is um, this policy will allow images to be pulled from a particular registry. In this case, it's my registry IO only. Right. Quick show of hands, how many of you have deployed a pod onto Kubernetes? Great. So uh, for in the interest of those who have not, when you deploy, basically a pod is a very basic unit of deployment in Kubernetes. And when you deploy a pod, uh, a pod can have one or more containers. And these containers have to reference an image from an image registry. So what this policy is going to do is make sure that all these images which are reference from within the pod can only reference myregistry.io. That might be your trusted registry running probably within your own enterprise. Right. So this is how a policy writ written in Rego would look like to implement that any image pulls from a pod uh, for a container should reference myregistry.io, should start with the URL myregistry.io. Now, to understand how this policy works, you need to look at what it is evaluating against. So as Mark explained, there is a webhook that's installed on the API server, which will fire off uh, a request to OPA. When somebody, say a developer in this case, is trying to deploy a pod, there will be an admission review request going to OPA, saying that, OK, this is a request that's this is what the developer is trying to do. Should we allow or disallow this request? Right. And this is how it looks. Now, quickly go through this. It's self-explanatory. If you have done any kind of JSON um, traversal, right? input is what OPA already packages this whole JSON blob as. So when you say input.request.kind.kind, .kind .kind, what it means is this input here dot request dot kind dot kind is a pod. So that's true. It moves on to the next one and says, get all the images. So input dot request dot object dot spec dot containers. What that means is input request here, objects here, spec and containers. You can see this pod has two containers reference, right? The first container is called web app. The second one is a sidecar. And you can see web app is being pulled from our trusted registry, and there is a sidecar, I've named it badregistry.io, which should not be allowed, because that's not our trusted registry. Right? Now, how does this actually evaluate? Uh, we'll uh, look at it quickly. Now, in this case here, image will be an array of both these images. That's myregistry.io.webapp, badregistry.io. Then we check, does it start with myregistry.io? Since the second one doesn't start, this will not be allowed, and it will be denied. So the developer would get a message saying that it's, we'll look, that, uh, look at how it looks uh, in a couple of minutes. So what the uh, OPA uh, project has done is they have come up with this really cool playground for you to you know, just see, OK, how does this uh, work? So I've just created an example. Quickly go through that. So as you can see, this is the admission review request, which will come into uh, OPA from 
the API server when someone tries to deploy a pod. And you can see here it's the kind is pod and the uh, images are referenced here. Now on this side, what this deny block uh, does is it will reply with the message if what the, uh, what the error message is, if there is an error or if the policy is disallowed. Otherwise it will be just blank. So let's look at how this works. I'm going to run this uh, and you can look at the output here that when I run this, evaluate the policy against this uh, admission review request, you can see the message going back is image bad registry.io, sidecar is not from a trusted registry. Right? Now, if I change this here to my registry.io and evaluate again, you can see there is no error because you know they are both now uh, trusted registries. Right? The other thing which is really cool about this uh, playground is you can go and evaluate certain part of it. You can see I'm just evaluating is the request kind a pod, and you can see the result here, that's true. You can also go and see, all right, what does this actually return, right? You can evaluate the selection, but as I said, it's an array of images, right? You can see the first image coming here, and the second one down there, right? So this is a really handy tool if you are uh, getting started with uh, OPA to just play around uh, and understand this better. Let's go back to the slides. All right, so implementing a policy using OPA. The other good thing about OPA is they have created a unit testing framework for us to test our policies before we actually deploy it into our cluster. Right? Uh, Otherwise, you'll be just deploying uh, policies over and over again and you know, troubleshooting it uh, in an environment. Uh, so what the uh, unit testing uh, framework gives you is uh, an interface for you to actually test your uh, policies. Now, this is the policy which I uh, showed to you uh, a little bit earlier. And this is how the test against that policy looks. Right? All it's doing is, uh, this is the data. It's a mock request coming in. With an I've removed, the, I've just kept those parts which are important for the test. I've, for example, removed that uh, the kind is admission review and all that. All I've kept is the kind is pod. There are two containers within this uh, pod. One is web web app and the other one sidecar. What this code here is doing is just asserting, right, what is the expected message for this test. Finally, it's calling that test with input as this message. That's the unsafe image. The way you can run this is, as you can see a verbose message as well that that test has passed. So you can uh, possibly write your policy, have it unit tested, probably part of your uh, CI process as well, and test all these policies are still valid against your uh, code. Right. So that's the unit testing part. What we are going to do is we have done the unit test for this. The second step is deploy a policy as a config map to your Kubernetes cluster. So I have connected to a Kubernetes cluster here Right? So everybody can see that. Right. What this is doing is, is this is creating a config map. And you can see I'm creating this config map from a file. And that file is the file which I showed you some time ago. Right? So you can see that the uh, config map has been created. Now, if I describe the config map which I just created, Right. What has happened now is the config map is created. OPA is watching for any config maps which are being created because it knows that these are policies which are in the OPA namespace. You can configure it to whatever you like, but currently I've configured it to the OPA namespace. And it's, it's, it's checking, okay, as soon as a config map is uh, created, it gets a call back, checks, is this uh, policy which has been created valid? And I didn't add any annotations on that config map, but you can see it's automatically added by OPA to say that 
yes, you have seen this policy and it's okay and it, it doesn't have any syntax problems and it looks good. Right? So that's the second part. That's how you check whether the policy has been deployed correctly. Right? Now the next final step is to deploy a resource, a pod for example, and test the policy in action. Now what I've got here is a pod and as you can see it's trying to pull an image from badregistry.io. So based on the policy which we have just uh, deployed onto uh, Kubernetes, OPA should stop this uh, pod being deployed, right? Because it's coming from an invalid, uh, untrusted registry. Let's see what happens. I'm going to deploy that pod, or at least try to deploy the pod. As you can see here, I think it'll make sense to look at this uh, with this, with the error message. Image not from a trusted registry. So what has happened now is the API server basically uh, sent that request, forwarded that request to OPA. OPA checked the policies and it failed. And you're not, as a developer, you're not able to deploy this policy. That's how you can. This is just an example of how to allow uh, images from a particular registry. But you, you can implement, for example, whether uh, a pod deployment, uh, a pod descriptor, does it have a particular label, many other use cases can be implemented as policies. All right. Finally, I just want to summarize what we have done in the demo. As an administrator, um, administrator creates a config map, writes a unit test uh, for that, deploys that onto Kubernetes in the open uh, namespace. Right. As soon as that happens, Right. We are looking at an architecture that's version 1, which Mark explained. So Cube Management picks it up. OP, uh, OPA is watching for the config maps and updates its policy cache and adds the annotation, policy status is OK. Right? So that we know that, OK, OPA has seen this and it, the syntax is right. The next step is, as a developer, I want to deploy a pod. And unfortunately, I'm trying to access it from badregistry.io. Now, when that deployment goes into uh, the API server, the webhook executes, and the admission review request is sent to OPA. Now, OPA evaluates the policies deployed, uh, depending on the policies deployed, OPA either allows or denies the request. Response is sent back to uh, the API server, which will then forward it back to the uh, developer. In this case, you can see that the admission review request, uh, the response allowed is false, and it also gives you an uh, error message saying why the uh, response is not allowed. Right. All right, hopefully this uh, is a good introduction to uh, OPA, and uh, uh, hopefully you'll go and try OPA yourself uh, and uh, implement uh, your custom policies uh, using OPA going forward. Last part is getting context in policies. So in some use cases, it's not enough if you just have that admission review request to make a decision whether to allow it or not. For example, for, for those of you who are familiar with this ingress uh, resource within Kubernetes, uh, this policy is basically trying to see whether uh, there is already an ingress deployed with the same host attribute. Right? So the important part here is you can see uh, that OPA has access to what's happening in Kubernetes. Right? Sometimes, just based on the request payload, you will not be able to make that decision. You need more context. That's exactly what OPA lets you by doing, uh, by allowing access to what the data within uh, Kubernetes. Here it's, uh, it, this statement is basically getting all ingresses which have been deployed in Kubernetes, with their namespace and their name, and getting the host header, sorry, the host attribute for that. Right? So, all this is very well documented here, so if you're interested, this is in our slides, we have uploaded it. This particular link gives a very good introduction to what uh, uh, the context, how to get context in policies, as well as good examples, it's very well documented. Right, that's all we had uh, for today. Hope you enjoyed our session, and uh, thanks for coming.